we now turn our attention to the giant head of uh, Bill Frazier, one of Adam Frazier's clones that became sentient and, uh, and now lives his own life. He's in the States currently. Can you hear me, Bill? I can. And we can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. I'll be talking about Zio Ecosystem. And the app is available here, so it would be great if at least a few of you could pull that up before the end of the talk. It'll be a preview of what I'll be talking about at the end. Um, but I really just want to kind of advertise this, make sure that people know it's available, and it will probably help them at some point as they're trying to construct Zio applications. So the situation a few months ago was Zio One is out and a lot of people are using it, they're building on it, and it's great. And then I joined Zyverge as Zio Two was really taking shape. A lot of its key features were getting completed. And it was getting to the point where we want the community to start constructing their libraries for Zio Two. And so that we're ready to hit the ground running when ZO2 finally comes out. And there were some questions around this. So who is already up to date, you know, being model citizens, releasing their stuff as soon as the latest milestone or release candidate is out? Who is in progress? Maybe they've got a branch or just some discussion happening around this migration. And how do we as an organization keep track of all this? So on my first day at Zyverge, Adam pitched this to me. This is the situation we're dealing with. Can we improve here? So I started using the best tooling and front end applications and fancy servers and constructed this product, which was a spreadsheet. And not very exciting, but it did start giving us an idea of the landscape of just how many projects were involved. This is only a few rows. There were over 60 projects that we were trying to manage. And so I'm tracking down different tickets, looking at build.sbt files to try and determine how all these things are interconnected. It was a starting point, but pretty obvious downsides. Uh, jamming everything into a table is very restrictive. And it's the lowest common denominator of UIs. And the biggest factor for me was by the time I got to the end of the list, I didn't trust the early entries because there's so many people working actively here that it was just immediately bogus information. There was an upside. We it did get one other person interested. Will Harvey jumped in and started generating some graphs from the data that I had aggregated. And this was cool. We started seeing some of the connections and seeing, all right, this Kubernetes library, there's a lot feeding into that. Zio logging is being used by several other libraries. And experimented with those graphs, so some metro style graphs and really pretty. It's fun to look at. However, it did require hand manipulation by will to denoise some of it and get it in a more useful format. And even then, there's just a lot going on when you have that full ecosystem view at one time. It's a lot. The win there was that we started to see what was important, what we wanted to focus on. And moving forward, I wanted to have code handle this for us. So the main pieces of logic here are we want to look up the project on Maven, examine its palm file, and then jam all of that data into a graph structure that we can then get some more usable output from. So the first version of this used Zio CLI, which is one of the great ecosystem libraries, lets you build command line applications pretty simply and define your options and everything. 
And this is a good step forward. We could see a little more actionable information, but still restrictive. You have to be in a terminal, which eliminates a lot of potential users. And you had to provide command line arguments anytime you wanted to switch what you were looking at. And ultimately, it served a purpose, but I couldn't just hand it to someone else and have them be able to jump right in and start using it. And my background is mainly as a web developer, so I tend to try and make web applications out of everything I can. And that's what we have here. And that's available on that link that I posted at the beginning of the talk. And now we start seeing some of this data in what I think is a fairly user-friendly way. And we can tell that everything with a green check mark is on the latest and greatest Zio. Everything with a yellow exclamation point has some work left to be done. So great. And I like that, but I heavily use my phone for all sorts of things, you know, whether it's managing GitHub projects, Slack, anything. And I wanted this to fit in that world. So not actually a phone, but this is similar to the view you would get on a phone. So the entire web application can be pulled up and navigated simply through here. So let's look at our Zio config project just as an example. And we can see that we can jump straight to the GitHub project if we are so inclined. Uh, you can get an easily copy pastable line for your SBT files. And then this is where you start to see how it fits into the larger ecosystem. You can see what is required to build this project and then what other projects build on top of it. And you can really just start clicking around and exploring. And you don't have to look at build files, just graphically navigate and see what is available. And so it's pretty fun just as an end user. And but I think it serves a couple purposes. So we've got an NI. NIO library, for instance, and maybe you're familiar with that library and you see, okay, it's up to date, but there are some other projects that depend on it that are currently blocked. So let's examine them. We see Zio FTP here, all the usual information, but then we can also see that, hey, they are actively working on this and we can just hop over and see what sort of discussion and progress has been made. And you can either just view that and leave, go on about your day, or you can pitch in. And that's what we're really trying to encourage here is a lot of times these migrations are easier than people expect. We've spent a lot of time on easing that migration path and Hopefully this just speeds things along. And I will come back here for a second. And just because I know it's been pretty light on code in this presentation, I do want to highlight you know, what makes this possible behind the scenes. And so when we're trying to recognize those open pull requests and route people, um, so you can do some natural language processing and really get at the heart of what a pull request is about. And we'll see the implementation of this. And that's all. It's actually not that complicated, but it's usable. It has some false positives, but there are a lot of cases where that finds the right pull request for you. And other things, if you are interested in submitting a project to be tracked here, hopefully we get more and more as ZO2 develops and has a full release. You can come here and click Submit Project, and you will be dropped right into the file where we are currently tracking our projects. And you can just make an entry following that style. 
And I will be keeping an eye on this. Hopefully these are just easy things to merge in. And alternatively, if there's some new information you'd like to see here, just do a feature request and you can fire that off. And oh, sorry, still getting used to the Mac here. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I just want to say thank you to Will Harvey for getting involved and triggering this process of turning it into a real application that would be more broadly usable. Adam for setting me on this path and then giving very little restraints on how we could tackle it. And Cyberge for hiring me, hiring a bunch of really inspiring people and just letting us go nuts. And yeah, that is the Zio ecosystem app. So thank you for joining today. Mm -hmm.